Hello everybody, I'm Carrara and welcome to another MemTank. Today we're going to be talking about the structure of amino acids. All amino acids look like this. They have a central carbon, called the alpha carbon, an amine group, a carboxyl group, and a side chain that is different for each amino acid. First, some important notation. If you see a line like this, each corner is a carbon with as many hydrogens bonded to it as possible. Since carbon has four valence electrons, it will bond to four hydrogens if it has no bonds, three if it has one bond, and so on. The same concept holds for other elements, like nitrogen, which has three valence electrons. Hence, this line represents the compound C3H8, or propane. If we draw another line next to the existing line, this represents a double bond. Carbons are still filled with as many hydrogens as possible. An example is benzene. Since each carbon has a single bond and a double bond, only one valence electron is available, so there is one hydrogen per carbon. Let's now talk about the 20 amino acids in humans. First, the hydrophobic or nonpolar amino acids. The first mnemonic for hydrophobic amino acids is GAVLIP. Glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, and proline. Something that can help is to think of them as a growing plant that eventually dies. Glycine starts out as a seedling with only one H. Then alanine extends the carbon skeleton up one. In valine, the plant grows into two branches. Then the stem grows a little more with leucine. Finally, at isoleucine, the plant starts to fall over, and it finally falls over completely with proline. Note that proline is a little weird, because the nitrogen only has one hydrogen, not two. All six of the GABLIP amino acids have straightforward abbreviations. All of the single letter abbreviations are simply the first letter, and all of the three letter abbreviations are the first three letters except for isoleucine, which is ILE instead of ISO. ISO sounds too cool, so they just had to change it. There are three more hydrophobic amino acids which can be remembered as metphederp, methionine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. Methionine has a theo in it, which is a prefix used to denote sulfur, so it has sulfur in it like this. The single letter abbreviation is just M. Phenylalanine sounds a lot like fancy alanine, so it just wears an earring, aka a benzene ring attached to the alanine side chain. Phenylalanine starts with an F sound, so its single letter abbreviation is F. You can remember that it's not P since proline already stole P. With a little stretch of the imagination, tryptophan looks like a fan, which is how you remember the structure. But it also kind of looks like a W if you turn it sideways, so the single letter abbreviation is W. The three letter abbreviations are part of the mnemonic, met for methionine, PHE for phenylalanine, and TRP for tryptophan. Now let's move on to uncharged polar or hydrophilic amino acids. So like a tag is a magic word, I guess? Serine, threonine, cysteine, tyrosine, asparagine, glutamine. Siddhika Yunk is for memorizing the single letter abbreviations S for serine, T for threonine, C for cysteine, Y for tyrosine, N for asparagine, and Q for glutamine. Serine and cysteine kind of sound like sister. They both start with the S sound, so they both have similar structures. Serine has an OH, while cysteine has an SH. Like the name suggests, threonine has three backbone atoms a carbon stem, splitting it into a carbon leaf and an oxygen leaf, signified by the O in threonine. Tyrosine is similar to phenylalanine. They both have Y that end in ine, but also tyrosine has an additional OH. After all, it has an O, but phenylalanine doesn't. Asparagine and glutamine are similar as well, except glutamine has one more carbon. All of these silica tag amino acids have the first three letters as the three letter abbreviations, except for asparagine and glutamine which have the first two letters followed by an N, ASN and GLN, respectively. Finally, we have reached the final category, charged hydrophilic amino acids, AGLA for the first letters and DECRA for the abbreviations, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, lysine, arginine, and histidine. Aspartic acid and glutamic acid are just asparagine and glutamine, respectively, except to replace the NH2 with an OH to make it a carboxyl group, which is acidic. Being acidic, these give off hydrogen ions in water to become negatively charged. Lysine is long and straight because of the LNS and looks like this. Arginine looks like this and histidine looks like this. All of the charged polar amino acids have their first three letters as their abbreviations. In summary, the mnemonics you have to know to memorize all 20 amino acids are GAVLIP, METFEDERP, SIDICA TAG, SIDICA YUNK, AGLA, and DECRA. All amino acids except for isoleucine, tryptophan, asparagine, and glutamine have the first three letters as their three-letter abbreviations. 
that's all I have for memorizing whether an amino acid is hydrophobic or hydrophilic, its abbreviations, and its molecular structure. Let us know whether there's anything you would like to be covered in the mem tags in the comment section below, and we'll be sure to make a video about it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more educational content. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.